Our ancient connections may not be obvious to this group. Our ancestors adapted to different climates, and as a result, humans are now among the most physically varied looking species on the planet. But looks can be deceiving. We're basically identical at the genetic level. I mean, if you, you look at the average person's DNA sequence and compare the same region to another person they're unrelated to, you know, they're 99.9% .9 identical. All that, there. Look right here, this is great. Light, dark, big, small, curly, straight, brown, blue. Minuscule genetic changes account for all of our differences. To track our ancient paths, though, scientists study DNA that stays very much the same. In men like George Dellis, it's a Y chromosome. All that. Let's do one more. It's been passed down the line from father to son over thousands of generations. And ultimately traces back to one man who lived in Africa around 60,000 years ago. Call him Scientific Adam. He wasn't the only guy alive back then, but only his Y chromosome survived through the ages. And every man alive today has a copy. For women like Nejla Demerji, the DNA comes from special cell structures called mitochondria, which both men and women carry, but only moms pass along. These trace back to one woman who also lived in Africa between 150 to 200,000 years ago. Call her Scientific Eve. She is the oldest root of our family tree. Africa is where the journey begins for everyone alive today. Ancestors, and it could take us a big step toward Adam. Wells noticed that Jefferson's Y chromosome mutations don't look European. So where did Jefferson's ancestors come from? To find out the truth, Wells needs another DNA sample. Everything about Jefferson points to him being European. Genealogists have traced his ancestry back to medieval France and Britain. But the test reveals something you might never have imagined. Jefferson's Y chromosome links him not to Europe, but to the Middle East, what is now Lebanon and Syria. This is the best guess. A direct ancestor who lived in a land that no longer exists called Phoenicia. The Bible calls it Canaan. Jefferson may look European, but his Y chromosome tells a different story. It shows that what we look like may not really tell us where we come from. And it raises a question mark over the traditional image of Adam. For centuries, artists have depicted him like this, like a European. For many of us, this is Adam. Michelangelo's famous painting in the Vatican Sistine Chapel. He looks like a beautiful Italian who spends a lot of time in the gym. Did the common ancestor of all men really look like this? The story of Jefferson suggests he could have looked very different. But Jefferson can lead us much further back than his Phoenician ancestor. Jefferson has a particular mutation that he shares with men from many different countries. With the same techniques used on Genghis Khan, Wells can link this mutation to another critical common ancestor. He's known as M9, he lived around 40,000 years ago. Wells' research suggests this one man could be the forefather of half of all men alive. We're getting closer to Adam. But Wells knows there are some men who do not have the M9 mutation. To identify the common ancestor of all men, 
he must take us deeper down the tree. But where does he go next? Fossil evidence points to three regions that could be the birthplace of humankind. Asia, the Middle East, and Africa. Can DNA resolve which one gave birth to scientific Adam? Here lead to a common ancestor for all these ethnic groups. They could lead us to Adam. If you could open your mouth. Wells take samples from 25 local men. Right. Thank you. Okay. If you could open your mouth. Where was your mother born? See you. See you. DNA analysis proves there are men on Pate from all over the place. Thank you. With ancestors from Africa, Europe, Arabia, India, and the Fertile Crescent of the Middle East. There is more genetic variation on this tiny island of Pate than in many countries. And the samples show something critical. They point to a new super ancestor. Even though the Y chromosomes come from all over the world, they almost all have something in common. A particular mutation that scientists call M168. In fact, men all over the planet share this mutation. Genghis Khan and the San Francisco Mongolians have it. Thomas Jefferson has it. Wells himself has it. Nearly three billion men share this mutation. And it means they're all descended from one man. It's a staggering thought. Genghis Khan could have fathered millions. But the man who first had this genetic mutation had billions of descendants. We're near the bottom of the tree. Could this man, M-168, be Adam? There's only one problem. On the Kenyan island of Pate, Spencer Wells found one man who doesn't fit. His Y chromosome doesn't have the critical mutation. It's a crucial clue. And he's not the only one. There are others who are not descended from M168. So he can't be Adam. M-168 is far down the tree, but not its base. And the Y chromosome from the odd man out on Pate gives us the final piece of our puzzle. The man's lineage originates in East or South Africa. Comparing this Y chromosome to thousands of men from all over the world reveals a critical discovery. These mutations originating in Africa appear on every Y chromosome in every man in the world today. These are the universal mutations we've been looking for. We followed the DNA trail all the way to the bottom of the tree. Every branch leads to one man, one Y chromosome. There must have been one man gave rise to all men alive today. He is the ultimate super ancestor. He is Scientific Adam. One of his descendants was M-168. He was the forefather of the ancient Middle Eastern ancestor of Thomas Jefferson. He gave rise to Genghis Khan's Y chromosome. In fact, all the Y chromosomes in the world trace back to this one African man. He is Scientific Adam. Wells believes the pattern of African Y chromosomes puts his birthplace somewhere in the Great Rift Valley region of East Africa, perhaps Tanzania or Ethiopia. He thinks this is scientific Adam's homeland, his Garden of Eden.
genetics can date the ancient Y chromosome mutations to calculate the age of scientific Adam. Wells believes he was born around 60,000 years ago. It sounds ancient, but it, the critical discoveries of where and when Adam lived prove he could not have looked like this. For the first time, it's possible to paint a new portrait of Adam based on science. It's missing. But Bender will base his reconstruction on the closest skull he can find. And that brings him to the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. Gary Sawyer is an expert on reconstructing prehistoric faces. He believes this skull, found at a site called Kafsa, is a good basis for Adam. Because he combines modern features with still some uh, archaic features in a lower forehead or frontal and good size brow ridges. The Kavza skull is about 100,000 years old. Adam's skull would be much more modern. Bender will have to estimate what thousands of years of evolution would have done to Kavza man's appearance. Kavza man is 100,000 years old. To construct a face for Adam, Bender has to update this portrait by 40,000 years. As humans evolved, the shape of our skulls changed, brow ridges shrank, the forehead became more vertical, the chin more prominent. Adam should be almost halfway between this ancient man and humans like us. Bender needs to find that midpoint. He needs a modern face to compare to the ancient skull. But not just any face. He wants someone whose lineage traces most directly back to Adam. Wells knows where to look. In East Africa is a little known tribe called the Hadzabe. Spencer, Mutano. Their DNA links them almost straight back to Adam. They give us a glimpse into his world. And they point to what Adam could have looked like. Uh. Scientific Adam should be a midpoint between the ancient Kafsa face and one of these faces. Like the Hadza chief Julius Hendaya Ne Mmm. But the Hadzabe can do more than show what scientific Adam might have looked like. They can give us a window into his world. And they reveal clues to what made Adam and his descendants so exceptional. They could give rise to all men on Earth. <laughs> Mutations on the Y chromosome show that scientific Adam was born around 60,000 years ago. <laughs> Their speech is far more complicated than most modern languages, and that suggests it's been around for much longer. English has around 30 different sounds. Click languages can have over a hundred. <laughs> Scientists believe that when humans first began to speak, they may have used clicks like these. We could be listening to Adam himself. Like the bow and arrow, these sounds are simple. But they may... Now Frank Bender can show us what he might have looked like. His goal is not just to sculpt Adam, but to reveal his personality. I tried to get into his head just like I would a fugitive. Intuition is the binder between art and science. It's the part that pulls it all together and gives it that life, that spark. I picture him very much alive and with a lot of the basic feelings that we have today. Confidence one point, insecurity at another. Finally, Wells comes face to face with the man he's been searching for. 
a new portrait of the common ancestor of every man today. Adam. Without a skull, we can't know for sure what Adam looked like. But a combination of genetic evidence, Bender's forensic skills, and cutting-edge computer software suggest he looks something like this. Thousands of years after the Bible, and hundreds of years after Michelangelo, we have a whole new face for Adam. I like the expression. He's got a very forceful look. He's intent on something, maybe taking over the world. You know, you begin to get perhaps an insight into why these guys won out and why this guy's our ancestor. Science can't tell for sure what set Adam apart. There were other men who lived alongside him. But over the centuries, all the other men's lines died out. Maybe some had only daughters or no children at all. Their Y chromosomes were lost forever. Only Adam's lineage survives. 